Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Um, today I want to talk about a really important issue that a lot of women are faced with post-pregnancy if they want to return to their sport and return to running, which is pain. It's a common issue and yet until recently it's been really drastically understudied and actually there's, there isn't a great deal of guidance from the research in terms of how to safely and quickly return women to their sport post-pregnancy. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about some new research that found some key risk factors for pain in postpartum women, but also how we can address them prior to return to, to, to running in women as they come back post-pregnancy. Um, I'd also like to point out another great uh, Facebook group that you can join if you'd like to find out more information, which is the Return to Running Postnatal Guidelines Facebook group run by uh, Gronya Donnelly and uh, Emma as well. Brilliant uh, co-authors in our um, Return to Running Guidelines that we did, and you'll find a lot of extra uh, information there, um, as I said, uh, ran by uh, Gronya and, and Emily, so do check that out. Uh, sorry. Okay, uh, so talking about some of uh, this research then uh, that is important uh, for, for women in return to uh, sport post-pregnancy, Shafali Christopher did this great uh, review recently and they actually looked at 538 runners uh, post-pregnancy and they studied a lot of different variables uh, with this to try and see were there differences between uh, runners that had pain post-pregnancy and runners that didn't have pain as they returned to their sport. And what they found is there seemed to be six key variables, significant variables that were associated with having pain. So one uh, was uh, runners that had pain post-pregnancy and returned to running uh, were often more likely to be a novice runner. Two, they had higher accumulated fatigue scores. Three, they had a history of previous running injury. And this is actually really common in other injury areas where there, there often is a previous history um, of injury that needs to be addressed. Four, it was more common that they had a vaginal delivery uh, during birth. Uh, five, there was also more likely to be uh, incontinence as part of the, of, of the picture here. And six, average sleep levels were, were less. So um, on average, less than 6.8 hours of sleep per night. Now, what they found in this study is that having four or more of these risk factors increased the prob probability of having a running related pain uh, to 61%. So often with these studies, what we see is that is a mixture of these different variables combining together to affect injury risk. Um, and if we can address these variables, particularly in the rehab stages um, prior to return to running, hopefully we can have a more successful return to running period. Now, if we think about some of these factors then, uh, being a novice runner, that makes sense. Uh, novice runners often don't have that, uh, that kind of capacity that we'd expect uh, in terms of managing their running. They haven't got built that, that up um, and they may not have been running at all during their pregnancy. So that's going to affect how much they can tolerate post-pregnancy. Fatigue makes a lot of sense as well. We, we see that fatigue can have a number of different effects um, on our runners. It can reduce their capacity to manage running. It can influence how they run and actually their running gait. A lot of people's running gait will change in a fatigued state. So you might see things like increased hip adduction, which can place increased stress on certain tissues. Previous running injury will often lead to some impairments that need to be addressed around strength, control, range of movement, etc. And if they're not addressed, perhaps that increases the risk of further injury going forward. And then uh, vaginal delivery, they mentioned in this study, can be associated with other factors such uh, as tears that uh, women encounter uh, during uh, pregnancy and labor. So that may well need to be addressed and assessed uh, by specialist input. And incontinence is an important factor and can affect many women post-pregnancy. Um, can be related to pelvic floor function, which again is going to link to to development of some injuries. And then finally, sleep. Outside of the research in uh, post-pregnant populations, we see sleep seems to be an important factor. Uh, we recommend seven to nine hours of sleep per night to optimize recover, uh, recovery. So um, we can see that that's gonna be a factor and particularly post-pregnancy, uh, we know this is a really difficult time for us to get uh, adequate sleep.
So we've got six, six key factors there that are going to interact with each other. The question mark is what can we actually do about it? Now, in the guidelines I produced with uh, Emma and Gronje, um, we really thought that, that, that the best time to return to running post-pregnancy was often after that 12-week stage postpartum. And what this does is it gives you a 12 week window of opportunity to address some of these factors, to address the needs from previous injury, to help with continence and recovery, etc. Um, and in the guidelines that um, you'll be able to access and find out more about on, that, on uh, Emma and Gronje's Facebook group, we talk through some of the options that you can do in the first 12 weeks post-pregnancy for this population. Now, what, what I would say with this is we do need to be realistic about what people can do in the post-pregnancy phase. Uh, in, in my case, our little one arrived 10 weeks prematurely and spent the first month in a special care baby unit. When he came home, he was still very underweight and he could sleep for a maximum of about 15 to 20 minutes at a time. So giving us a long list of things to do during this period would have been massively unrealistic. It was as much as we could do to get dressed and feed ourselves during this time. So we do need to be realistic, but give people options that they can choose if they want to, if they feel they've got the energy, if they feel they've got the time. So in the first couple of weeks post-pregnancy, this might be a good stage to start to introduce pelvic floor muscles to build strength, uh, pelvic floor muscle exercises to build strength and endurance there. Perhaps including some basic core exercises around things like controlling anterior and posterior pelvic tilt and some simple uh, cardiovascular exercise like walking, whatever's tolerable and realistic at that stage. Weeks two to four, we might be able to progress on with the walking, perhaps pushing that walking distance a little bit more or the speed and start to, to, to progress the training for the pelvic floor muscles and core rehab. It might be at this point, you want to start to bring in lower level exercises um, for people to start developing strength. Again, whatever they can manage, perhaps some um, unweighted squats or lunges, uh, bridging, um, anything that's gonna be tolerable for them at that stage and might address any of the strength or control or range of movement deficits that they're presenting with. From four to six weeks, we might be able to progress on with the exercise, perhaps including some, some static cycling or some low impact cross training work to try and build a little bit of fitness, which again can help with that return to running process. Again, as I say, being realistic about how much or how little we're gonna ask each person to try and do in this, because there's a lot going on in this stage of, of people's lives. My family refer to this, this you know, post-pregnancy phase as the hurt locker. There's lots happening, you sleep deprived, we can't put people under pressure to do too much. At six to eight weeks, we might then push things on a little bit more, perhaps some power walking, um, increasing to perhaps include some low impact exercise if it's, if it's um, realistic uh, and possible for that person. We might start to add in a bit more resistance to the lower limb strengthening exercises to build up lower limb and core strength, again, to address their needs there and help their return to running. Then from weeks eight to 12, at this point, um, we might be able to introduce swimming if it's safe for that person, perhaps considering things like spinning if it's, if it's comfortable, if they're okay on the saddle. Now, once we reach that 12 week stage, we think this is an appropriate stage often to, uh, to start to think about return to, to running, although it will be individual specific. At this stage in our guidelines, we would be recommending you do some screening and they would typically look out for some of these issues that have been mentioned in uh, Christopher Atul's uh, recent uh, study that found these risk factors. So screen for any issues uh, with continence if they haven't been addressed, look at fatigue levels and sleep, uh, test for strength, test how well that they can tolerate, uh, tolerate impact uh, look at how they're feeling um, emotionally as well do they are they struggling with their mood or anything else like that um, and if we're finding any of these issues it may be that it's best that they're addressed before we start that return to running process because we can see from the research they might be a risk factor for pain so can we address them in that 12 week period prior to return to running um, to reduce the likelihood of them developing pain 
Now, there's quite a few um, options available for us there, and we do need more research uh, in this particular area. What I would say too is we need to recognize that the needs of women in this postpartum stage are really multidimensional. Uh, there's physical needs, emotional needs, there's needs around continence, wound healing, uh, all sorts of things that need to be addressed. So I think we need to ask ourselves, are we as individuals the best person to be trying to help with all these multidimensional needs? And I would say for me, the answer would be no. I wouldn't tend to work on my own with women during this stage uh, to return them to running. I find it's often better to work with asbestos women's health physiotherapists, perhaps with their midwife and other members of the team to make sure that all the needs are met during this stage which we know is especially challenging um, so why not team up with other people um, so that you can get the best results for women during this phase and hopefully address some of these risk factors okay thank you very much for for listening to to this video i hope you've uh, found it uh, useful um, and give you some ideas of some of the factors that we can address um, in the postpartum period to, to reduce the risk of pain um, in runners just to recap those uh, six key variables that were found in this recent research by christopher for at all being a novice runner uh, higher levels of fatigue previous running injury vaginal delivery, incontinence, um, and average sleep levels. So if we can address some of these factors in the uh, postpartum 12-week period prior to that to return to running, screen them to make sure they're addressed, hopefully we're going to get a much more successful return to running process. Now, I've included uh, a link to our uh, running injury webinars on Achilles tendinopathy, iliotibial band syndrome, uh, lateral hip pain. Do check those out. They're, they're all free. There's lots of information about uh, running injury there. And do check out Emma and Gronje's uh, Facebook group as well. As I said, that's called the Return to Running Postnatal Guidelines Group for lots more information on successful return to sport post-pregnancy. Okay, thanks again for listening. Bye for now.